In this presentation, we will take a look at principles of internal control components. We're going to list out our five components of the internal controls, and then we'll list out principles related to them. Those five components being the control environment, risk assessment, control activities, information and communication, and monitoring activities. We're going to start off with the control environment, listing the principles related to control environment. First principle, business shows a commitment to integrity and ethical value. So we're looking at this in terms of the controls of the organization, in terms of the organization as a whole, that the business shows a commitment to integrity and ethical values. Note, these things aren't always the easiest things for us to write down and communicate, but you can think about how can we get a feel for that? We're gonna be, of course, talking to people, inquiring about it, and writing down our impressions of the control environment in terms of business shows commitment to integrity and ethical value principle number two board of directors shows independence from management and exercises oversight of the development and performance of internal control you'll recall that the board of directors are represented and voted on by the owners the shareholders so therefore they should be able to provide some oversight over management which in essence are the people that they hire in order to act as agents of the shareholders so the board of directors should show independence from management. The more independence from management then, the more you would think the board of directors would have good oversight over management. Whereas if there's less independence from management, it would be a, a more difficult situation. You would think the oversight wouldn't be as good over the performance of uh, the management. Third principle, management sets up with uh, board oversight structures reporting lines and authorities and responsibilities in the pursuit of objectives so we have the setup and the board of directors being involved in this with the structure the reporting lines we have the business hierarchy the reporting lines within it and authorities and responsibilities in the pursuit of the objectives what are the authorities and responsibilities this is going to be really important because of course people need to understand <laughs> their specific uh, roles and responsibilities it seems like a basic thing but oftentimes people don't have a good idea of what their responsibilities are things fall down uh, you know in the middle between the responsibilities of two individuals possibly and we don't know exactly who to hold accountable because it was never well defined in the first place principle four business shows a commitment to attract develop and retain competent employees in alignment with objectives so we're looking at the types of employees that are being brought into the organization and we might also consider the overturn of employees are, are they bringing up the employees that seem to be performing well the best top performance of the employee of the organization are they basically retaining employees that are are well performing employees is there a high turnover uh, of employees of uh, employees and what's going to be basically the feeling of employees which can be indicated in whether there's a high turnover or not or whether they're basically able to develop employees within the organization number five business holds individuals accountable for their internal control responsibilities in the pursuit of objectives this of course lines out with first determining what the responsibilities are for different individuals and then determining whether or not uh, the individuals have uh, followed through with their responsibilities and the people that aren't following through we know who to hold accountable and we want to be able to see that the people responsible for for certain conditions or for certain objectives are the ones being held accountable if those objectives are not met next we'll take a look at risk uh, risk assessment principles or principles related to risk assessment principle number one business specifies objectives with enough clarity to enable the identification and assessment of risks related to objectives. So when we're thinking about the risks, we need to know exactly what the objectives are so that that's gonna help us to identify what the risks are. We need to be clear about that. And the more clear we are about that, the more clearly we can basically assess what those risks are and take action with regards to them. Principle number two, business identifies risks to the achievement of its objectives across the entity and analyzes risks as a basis for determining how the risks are to be managed once we understand what the risks are we want to see them across the organization and then we can come up with a plan of course to see how we want to deal with those risks how can we mitigate those risks uh, principle three business considers the potential for fraud in assessing risks to the achievement of objectives so we want to consider fraud and we'll talk a little bit more about the fraud factors that uh, can be put together or what's going to increase the likelihood of fraud 
we want to basically set up an environment within the organization to lessen the likelihood of fraud as part of the components of our internal control. So first we have to say, what are the risks of fraud? Some of those risks are going to be things that uh, we can apply to any type of organization. Some might be specific to the type of organization that we are in. We want to see where the, the fraud risks are highest and put in policies and principles in order to mitigate them. Uh, principle number four, business entities and assesses changes that could significantly impact the system of internal controls. So we're going to identify and assess any changes. Anytime we have a significant change, we should have in our mind, what is the internal control? What are going to be the risks related to any significant changes? And we should basically map out what are going to be the risks related to the significant change, make adjustments uh, as necessary based on those changes and those adjusted risks. Next, we'll take a look at the principles related to control activities. Principle number one. Principle selects and develops control activities that contribute to the mitigation of risks to achievement of objectives to acceptable levels. So now we're on basically the ground floor. We're talking about the control activities, the actual implementation and development and implementation of those control activities that are going to be put in place in order to contribute to the mitigation, the lessening of the risks to the achievement of objectives to acceptable levels. We're going to be thinking about things then including performance reviews as our control activities, physical controls as our perform as our control activities, the segregation of duties, this probably being the one that you want to think about first. When you think about uh, internal controls in general, one of the first thing that probably comes into mind should be the segregation of duties. You probably think of things like performance review or people uh, when they first think about internal controls are probably thinking about some type of performance reviews when considering audit and setting up the audit procedures and someone asks you about internal controls, the first thing that should come to your mind is really the separation of duties as one of the major functions and factions or areas of internal controls. Then we have the information processing controls. Principle number two, business selects and develops general control activities over technology to support the achievement of objectives so once we have these set up once we have the control activities we will set them up and we're probably going to need technology in order to do this we're going to have some type of database program as part of our internal controls oftentimes we're going to that's going to allow us to do things like the separation of duties like having the performance reviews through uh, the interaction and the setting up of that database and of course we need it professionals to help us with that uh, that part of it so we set up the internal controls work with it then to help us to implement those by restricting or manipulating the database to give certain restrictions and assignments to different individuals principle number three business sets up control activities through policies that establish what uh, is expected and procedures that put policies into play so obviously once we implement this information we're going to actually put in the play the policies and the procedures as we as we set this set thing up so we're imagining of course we set up the controls now we're going to in the pot in the part of the control system where we have to actually implement and put those controls into place which involves us setting up the policies and procedures and implementing those policies and procedures Next, we have information and communication principle. Principle number one, business obtains, makes, and uses relevant quality information to support the functioning of internal controls. This could include identify and record valid transactions, classify uh, transactions correctly, uh, measure the value of transactions correctly, record transactions in the correct period, correctly present uh, transaction and disclosures. Principle number two, business communicates information internally. Communication includes objectives and responsibilities for internal controls needed to support the functioning of the internal controls. Obviously, when we set up the internal controls, we then need to have the good communication in order for people to understand those internal controls in terms of what is expected of them, as well as what uh, the reason is to some degree, because that'll give them some incentive to follow through and make sure that they are implementing the internal controls and possibly the feeling of, of well-being and self-worth as they go through the internal controls, some processes which can seem like they're going to be something that's not contributing to the performance, but actually is when you think about it out on the bigger picture level. So principle number three, business communications with external parties regarding issues affecting the functioning of 
internal controls. Next, we're going to take a look at monitoring activities, principles related to it. Principle number one, business selects, develops, and performs ongoing and or separate evaluations to determine whether the components of internal controls are installed and functioning. So, you'll, of course, we're thinking about the internal controls here in terms of what are the risks. We come up with a plan for internal controls. We then implement that tr plan with the control activities. We communicate that information. And then, of course, we monitor that information to see if this the internal control processes are set up well if they're implemented well if they're doing what we would expect them to do principle number two business evaluates and communicates internal control problems in a timely manner to parties responsible for taking corrective action if there's problems in, ter in the internal controls in terms of either the way the internal control is set up not well designed or in the way it's being implemented not being implemented or followed through with then we go to the appropriate level of management and discuss the the implementation and or design at that at that point parties include senior management and the board of directors as appropriate obviously if it's if it's to the point where we can discuss this with senior management and and take care of it then that would be it if it's something that's going to be a serious flaw in the internal controls and have substantial risk then of course we would want to include the board of directors as well audit risk model you'll recall that the audit risk model uh, represents in a formula type format audit risk equals the inherent risk the inherent risk within basically inherent in the organization or the type of business that we're in line with the control risk control risk what we are talking about now and then we have the detection risk this is the auditors basically whether the audit will pick up uh pick up any problems within the auditing process these two recall are kind of on the business side of things what industry they're in what's inherently risky about the business ventures that they are in that's their decision to be in that business and take on those inherent risks the control risk is what they are designing in their bureaucratic system as they set up their uh, their business model that of course is the, is the component that we're focusing on here when we consider the overall audit risk model